is it possible for canned goods to last for a hundred years? You might be thinking, this guy's using hyperbole. I'm going to show you some amazing history. And I'm also going to show you five ways to find out that your canned goods may have gone bad. Three ways to know that your jars that you have canned yourself may have gone bad and some incredible history and things that may help you out someday in the future. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. And if you end up liking this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications. The year was 1865, the final year of the Civil War, and a steamboat by the name of Bertrand was taking off on the Missouri River, making its way up to Fort Benton in Montana. And as it was making its way, something happened somehow, some way, the ship sank and ended up under 30 feet of silt. The ship was not discovered again until 1968, 103 years later. And aboard the ship, they actually found canned goods, cans of oysters, tomatoes, mixed vegetables, honey, and different things. And they were actually taken and they analyzed them to see what had happened to them over the course of the last century. And so a group of people with the NFPA, the National Food Processors Association, you might be thinking, ah, yes, I, I know them well. <laughs> Probably not, right? But a group of people with the National Food Processors Association took these cans and had them analyzed to discover, well, how are they doing? Had bacteria been introduced? And what they found was absolutely fascinating. They discovered that these cans, though over a century old, had had no bacteria introduced, they found that the vitamin A and vitamin C content had probably diminished over that time period, but they found that the protein seemed to be unchanged from what you would expect to find in canned veggies today. And also the calcium, so the protein and the calcium seemed to be unchanged. They did say that it didn't have the, you know, kind of like a fresh smell anymore, but it didn't seem to have a negative smell either after all of this time period. So this is absolutely incredible. So you might be thinking, so Chad, you, you, you'd eat a hundred year old canned food? Absolutely not. I wouldn't want anything to do with it. But the point is, is that it could be potentially that in some situations under the right environment, that it actually could last for a hundred years and still be safe to consume. I wouldn't want to consume it, but it might actually be safe. Now you might be thinking, Hey, uh, that doesn't mean something sitting in someone's basement for a hundred years would also be safe. Uh, there's a couple of factors here sitting 30 feet under silt and filled with water that that might make a little bit of difference for sure. Maybe it kept the, oxygen out of the environment. That might be one factor keeping it cool. That might be another factor. So there are certain factors, but it didn't end there. We read in the same article that this comes from in this fascinating article by Dale Blumenthal about once again, about the national food processors association that someone had found 40 year old canned food in the basement of a house in California. And so once again, they tested it to see, was it actually safe? Was it healthy or it had it spoiled over four decades? Now it turned out that it was canned corn specifically. And as it was analyzed, they discovered that it seemed fresh like canned corn today, and it had no loss of its nutritional content. So this is really, so this is just incredible to think about that some canned goods could last for 40 years. So you might be wondering, why would you want to make a video to tell people to eat 40 year old canned food? Well, in general, I don't, I don't want to make that video. But what I am sharing is that often canned goods might last a lot longer than you might have imagined. And listen, if, if you live in good times and you can go to the grocery store and get new canned goods. And if it hits that date best used by, and you're like, Hey, I don't want it, you know, get rid of it. Hey, if, if that's what you gotta do, that's what you gotta do. But it turns out that these best by dates are not necessarily some scientific wham. There it is. Oh, it was June 12. And then there was a change by June 13th, right? Well, not so fast. Uh, one of my friends actually owns a company that produces food and this particular food that they make, they put a best by use date and they 
basically said, eh, you know, it's not, it's not totally scientific. There's no lab that you send it into to find out. You just say what you think it would be best by. And so it's not as if they did some great scientific experiment to find out. They've just worked with it, they've looked at it, and they're like, oh yeah, okay, a year later it's still fine. Best used by, you know, a year later, whatever the date is. And so it's not as technical as we might think. It's kind of up to the individual who makes the product how long it's gonna last. Now, that might be different for meats, I'm not sure, but I'm talking about canned goods or, or some of these dried foods. They, it's not as technical as we, the consumer, might actually imagine. Now, in this same article on the history of canning and how long canned goods may last, Dale Blumenthal also tells us some of the history of, well, how did canning come about in the first place? And this is quite fascinating. So it all began really during the Napoleonic Wars. Napoleon was a dictator who came to power after the reign of terror. So he had the reign of terror like the later portion of the 1700s. And so you had this great transition of power in France. Napoleon comes to power, becomes a dictator, and goes to war in Europe. And as he did, during wartime, you have tremendous famine, malnutrition, starvation, and death in many cases. And so Napoleon wanted to find a way, how can we get food to preserve so that my men who are going to war can have enough nutrition, enough sustenance to fight another day. So what Napoleon did is he offered 12,000 francs to anyone who could come up with a better method of food preservation. Well, there was a man from Paris named Nicholas Appert, and he noticed that wine, which was put in glass bottles, corked without air in it, uh, with as little air as possible, that it actually would store that way. So he thought, well, what if we would put food in those same kind of containers, cork them, and he heated them, and what ended up happening, it worked. That food actually could be preserved by heating it in this certain environment, and now he could have canned goods. Well, he ended up winning 12,000 francs. So canning was discovered because of the necessities in war. So difficult times are times where people begin to think about canning. This past year, as people were out of work, you saw more and more people began to garden, and then people thought about canning, and then the canning goods sold out, and you couldn't find tops for your cans, and so it just, or for your jars, it became very difficult. But in difficult times are times where people think about food preservation. Now, I wanna share with you some things that will help you to know if your food has gone bad, if your stored food has gone bad. But before that, Often people are afraid of canning because of pressure canning. And what ends up happening, you heat the food under pressure and people are afraid of the explosion that might take place. So they're afraid of this. And so the good news is there are modern ways that make it more safe than in the past. So you have, uh, there's modern canners that are similar to things like, you probably heard of the Instant Pot. The Instant Pot is like the most uh, famous, the greatest selling product on Amazon. But somebody came up with a canner like an Instant Pot and this particular canner can do the same thing. You can either cook in it or you can can in it. And this, I have a link below. I have a uh, affiliate link if you want to learn more about it, check out below in the description. And, or if you wanna use the old standard method, which is actually fantastic. I'm not saying you have to go some new fancy route. If you wanna go the old fashioned route, you could even, uh, you could do it in many different ways. But here's, there's another one down below. You can check out both of them if you have any interest. It shouldn't cost you any extra, but it would help me out. But before we go any further, I wanna share you four things that can actually help prolong the shelf life of the things that you're storing. Number one is to actually keep the containers from moisture. It's pretty obvious, but you don't want a lot of moisture around your containers, so keep them in a dry environment. Number two is to help keep them out of the sunlight. You don't want the sunlight on them, that can actually be detrimental to your canned goods. Number three, number three is kind of obvious, make sure they aren't opened in any way, that nothing happens to open them. Kind of obvious, but we wanna make sure these are four important things. And number four, according to the USDA, the very best temperature to store canned goods at is somewhere between 50 and 70 degrees, which is great for many basements. Now, 
Uh, if you don't have a heated basement, it might get colder than 50. If you have a actual storage room like a root cellar, that might get, my root cellar gets down to about, it gets in the low 40s normally but my standard basement stays probably in the 50s most of the time. In the summer it does actually get warmer, but most of the time it probably doesn't hit 70. So a standard basement might be a perfect place to store your cans, which is where many people do anyway. But let's talk about five ways to know that your canned goods may actually be going bad. And we're talking about cans at this point. We'll move on to jars right after that. Number one is to make sure that there are no dents in your cans. You may even go to the scratch and dent store where you buy some dented cans and hey, if they're quite new, it might be okay. But if they're old, that becomes seriously dangerous if there's a dent in your can. Number two, if you see any bulges, you also want to avoid that can. That could be evidence that somehow bacterial growth is taking place within that can and it's expanding the can and it's causing some kind of bulge. Number three, are there any kind of very small pinholes? Uh, these things are quite obvious, but if you see any kind of very small holes, or any hole for that matter, obviously you would avoid whatever is in that can. Number four, any kind of rust on a can is a sign that you should not eat it. Now you might be thinking, Chad, the modern cans don't rust. That's right. So if it is rusting, you know that it's a old can. But if there is any kind of rust, avoid that can. And number five is if you see any kind of seam opening or cracking or, or even just slight looking like there may be some kind of crack in the, in the seal of the can, avoid that can. I, I realize these things are very obvious, but these are things that, hey, if you didn't know, you didn't know. So make sure these are five reasons to avoid the things that you may be storing. But let's look at three ways to know that your canned goods, the jars that you've actually canned yourself, may have gone bad. Now, if you've ever canned before, you know that there's this suction process. After you've heated the jar, the, you let it sit out and it should begin a suction process. And if it doesn't pop down, then you know, okay, I better eat that thing soon because it's gonna go bad. So if you get to the point where you're going to eat some of your food or you're going to take one of your jars off the shelf and you open it up and, the, and it doesn't pop, what do you know? You know that it wasn't sealed. And if it wasn't sealed, do not eat it. Now, obviously, if you have just done the canning process that day and it happens, that doesn't mean it's gone bad immediately. But if it's two months down the road, yes, it has, it should have gone bad by that point. So if, if it hasn't popped immediately or it hasn't gone down that day, I mean, or by the, you know, by the next day, if there's something wrong with it, you know that that one is not something to keep in storage. Number two, this one goes right along with it. If the seal is damaged in any way, in somewhere during storage, do not eat it because you could get super, super sick. So you wanna find something else to eat in that situation. And number three, if the jar is damaged in any way, you want to get rid of it. Now I know these things are very, very obvious, but for someone who's new to this game, you've never done it before, it's good to know these things. So if you like this, so if you like this video, hit the subscribe button. And also here's a video right here that is on Food preservation, looking at specifically a dehydrated food, cancer, and diabetes. Amazing information that I'll bet you've never seen, unless you've seen my video before. Check that out. You don't want to miss that. It's right here. God bless and have a fantastic day.